Hello and welcome to New Life Online. My name is Tom Pounder. I'm the online campus pastor here at New Life Christian Church. And these are our Good Friday Reflections. Over the course of the afternoon, we're going to be spending time reflecting on God's goodness. And we're going to be sharing messages from different people from New Life. And we're going to be enjoying worship together as well as we reflect on God's goodness, His grace, and His forgiveness by sending Jesus to die for our sins so that we can have that relationship with Him again. Hey, if this is one of your first few times here at New Life, if you've never connected with us and want to learn more information about New Life, all you have to do is go to newlife.church slash connect, and you can fill out a digital connection card and learn more about New Life. If you have a prayer request today, we would love to be praying with you and for you. All you have to do is go to newlife.church slash prayer. Hey, we hope that you enjoy this time and you're able to reflect on God's goodness today and every day as we get ready for Easter. Enjoy the service, and I'll see you right afterwards. Sounds a new beginning as distant hearts begin believing. Redemption's bid is unrelenting. Your love goes on. Your love goes on. You carry us, you carry us when the world gives way. You cover us, you cover us with your endless grace. Time is up for chasing shadow. You gave the world a light to follow. A hope that shines beyond tomorrow. Your love goes on. Your love goes. You carry us, you carry us when the world gives way. You cover us, you cover us with your endless grace. Your love is relentless. Your love is relentless. Through the veil of darkness, tearing every chain, you set us free. Fighting for the furthest high, you gave your life for all to see. Tearing through the veil of darkness, breaking every chain, you set us free. Fighting for the furthest high, you gave.
When I think about having dinners with my friends and my family, I think about a big celebration. We're there together to celebrate. We don't get together all the time, but we get together to celebrate a promotion or great grades from one of the grandchildren. It's a great opportunity for us to be together, have fun, and to celebrate something great. Well, in the same way, when the people got together with the Passover dinner with Jesus, I think a lot of people there were thinking about celebrating, that this is an opportunity for them to celebrate the Passover, that many years ago, the the angel of death passed over every house in in Egypt that had the blood of a lamb on its doorpost. And they were celebrating that. They've been celebrating it for hundreds of years. So it was only natural for them to get together and to celebrate the Passover together. However, this Passover dinner was a little bit different. In particular, it was different for two people, Jesus and Judas. See, for the longest time, the chief priests were always upset with Jesus. Jesus was disrupting the norm of the religious people because he came talking about a message of hope, a message of love that comes from following God. He was doing miracles and bringing lots of healing to people that needed healing. And this was not good for the religious people. They were not happy with this. And they wanted an opportunity to get rid of Jesus, to push him off. In fact, it says this in Matthew. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by self and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. They were looking for an opportunity to get rid of Jesus. But not just get rid of him, like send him to the next town or arrest him. They were looking for an opportunity to kill him. And that opportunity, unfortunately, came from Judas, one of his closest friends. Later on in Matthew, it says this, Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment on, he sought an opportunity to betray him. And that opportunity came at the Passover dinner. See, after they had finished their dinner, Judas went away and came back a little bit later with an armed group of people to arrest Jesus, take him over to Pilate, and then ultimately to the cross. Now, growing up, I thought, Judas, how how could you do this? Like, why, Judas, would you do this? This was one of your best friends. And ultimately, you did this for 30 pieces of silver. Surely Jesus was more than just 30 pieces of silver. That just seems so small. Judas, how could you do this? But then as I grew up and as I went through my life, I realized, you know what? I'm not so different from Judas. See, growing up in my family, we grew up in a Christian home where I went to church every Sunday. But Christ wasn't real to me until the summer between my junior and senior year in high school. And I went on this mission trip. And then after the mission trip, I went and served at another camp. And it was there that I saw the, the sacrifice that Christ made for me, that it all made sense to me. The sacrifice of Jesus dying on the cross for my sins and for my betrayals. And I was all in on Jesus. From that moment on, my senior year, I was a new person. In Christ, I was memorizing the Bible. I was reading the Bible every day. I was talking to my friends about Jesus. I was praying. I was going to church and youth group all the time. I was all in on Jesus. But over time, it was, it was a gradual thing, but over time, I began to betray Jesus just like Judas. You know, not so much for the 30 pieces of silver, but with my time. I began to spend less time with Jesus so I could spend time with my friends. With decision-making, I betrayed Jesus with my decision-making. Instead of seeking his will for my life and for things that I wanted to do, I began to think, what can I do? And just thought about my life and not letting God in on that. And I betrayed Jesus another thing, exchanging the truths and the promises of Jesus for lies and comforts that were only temporary. See, I'm no different than Judas. I betrayed Jesus over that time as well. And I think if we're honest with ourselves... I think we all betray Jesus just like Judas did. You know, it doesn't look the same, but we all do it. And so as I reflect on Good Friday and what it means to me, I am grateful that God sent his son Jesus to live his life and to lay down his life and sacrifice it for me and all of us who have betrayed Jesus over time. I'm grateful for that sacrifice.
Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested my life began Ash was redeemed on the beauty remains And my orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance And when death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace, so free While she's over me You have made me new now Life begins with you It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new now. Life begins with you. Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend When death was arrested my life began Oh, oh your grace so free While she's over me You have made It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. A savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoiced at the heaven at last. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace, so free while she's on. It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Oh, we're free, free forever. We're free. Come join the song. One of the disciples of Jesus, a man by the name of Peter, is one of the most famous players in the biblical narrative. Many times he's seen as this hero of faith, and then other times we watch him and we're like, this guy's our scapegoat to make us feel better about ourselves. He's the guy who walks on water with Jesus. 
When Jesus comes to him and says, who do you say that I am? Peter is the one who says, you are the Christ. You're the son of God. Jesus responds to that by saying, you're a rock. And on the bedrock of your confession about who I am, I'm going to build my church. But Peter is also the guy who seemed to put his foot in his mouth all the time. He's also the guy that Jesus had to call Satan once. And so he becomes the guy we just don't want to be like. We're not quite as bad as Peter. There's one moment in particular that stands out as the what not to do as a follower of Jesus moment. And it happens right here on this Good Friday. The story is found in Matthew chapter 26, and this is how it goes. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came up to him and said, you also were with Jesus the Galilean, but he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the entrance, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Then again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you too are one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. On three separate occasions here, Peter is confronted with an opportunity, an opportunity to own who he believes Jesus is, but he doesn't notice the sun coming up in the background. He denies Jesus once and the sun comes up a little bit more. He promises on an oath, I don't know the man. The light from the sunrise starts to spread across the city. Then we, when he's recognized by his accent, he begins to swear and curse, I don't know the man. And that's when the rooster crows. The sun has been coming up silently in the background, and when he hears the rooster, he remembers the conversation, one of the last conversations Peter will have with Jesus before the cross. And in that conversation, he makes Jesus a promise, a pledge, if you will. He pledges his undying commitment to Jesus. Jesus says, I'm going to be arrested. He says, I'm all in. I'll go to prison with you, Jesus. Jesus says, Peter, Peter, you're, you're not even going to make it through the night. You're going to deny me three times before the sun comes up, Peter. I'm going to be arrested and killed. And Peter says, it doesn't matter. I'll die with you, Jesus. Whatever it takes, I'm all in, Lord. Whatever it means, I'm with you. And when the rooster crowed, he realized the sun had been coming up silently over the horizon, and he remembers the conversation. So as I reflect on Peter in this encounter and in this moment, something hits me like not ever before, this is how it usually works for me. And I'm willing to bet it's how it usually works for you. I make a lot of promises too. Jesus, I'm all in with you. I will never give up on you, Jesus. Jesus, if you just do this and fix this situation, if you just step in right here, Jesus, I will never mess up in that area again. I will never sin that way again. I'll give my life to you in ministry, Jesus. We're going to storm the gates of hell together, Jesus. It's going to be great. But then silently in the background, the sun rises the opportunity presents itself, and I'm not as bold as I thought I would be. The conversation with that person that I've been thinking about, and in my mind, I just know I need to own that conversation, and I need to challenge to a next step, but when the opportunity comes, and as the sun rises, I don't take it. But there's always a good reason there's always a good reason why. Well, something came up in my life. You know, actually, I was doing ministry things. I was writing a sermon, and that's a really great excuse for not doing the work Jesus calls me to. I needed to tend to something else. There was this one email I was just trying to figure out. It was my day off. And in the midst of my golden opportunities to stand up for Christ, the sun rises behind me, and a rooster crows. 
And I remember the conversation. I remember my pledge. I remember my promise. But I was too scared. I fell short. I failed. And I denied my Jesus. Haven't you been there too? You know, in this moment, as I reflect, I realize I'm no better than Peter. I can't look at this and even look down on Peter here because I'm just like him. I did exactly the same thing. And Peter, in this instance, he goes out and he weeps bitterly. His pain is obvious, but it's going to be days before he is restored to Jesus. And my best response in these exact same moments is to follow Peter's example and to weep as Peter did and to mourn my sin and to repent. But here we stand on Good Friday. What's so good about Good Friday? That even as Peter is in the process of denying he even knows Jesus, Jesus is preparing to go to the cross to pay for the sin of Peter's very denial. That even as I deny Jesus and fail, Jesus prepares and on Good Friday goes to the cross to pay the penalty for my denial and my sin. And he does the same for you on this Good Friday. What's so good about it? The best news about Good Friday is that our story isn't over yet. was crowned with thorns, is crowned with glory now. The Savior knelt to wash our feet, and now at His feet we bow. The one who wore our sin Now robed in majesty, the radiance of perfect love now shines for all to see. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise. To Christ our King, your name, your name is victory, and all praise will rise to Christ our King. that held us now gives way to him who is our peace his final breath upon the cross is now alive in me your name your name All praise will rise to Christ our King. Your name, your name is victory. All praise will rise to Christ our King. Ashes of defeat, the resurrected King is resurrecting me 
in your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting. By your Spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days his body there would not remain our God has robbed the grave our God has robbed the grave What's so good about Good Friday? Let me start by asking a question. Is it necessary to forgive a person for not knowing what they've done? This is exactly what Jesus asked God in the following verse from Luke 23, 32 through 38, in the final hours of his life. Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they cast lots to divide his garments. And the people stood by watching. But the rulers scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Christ of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, if you are king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him reading, this is the king of the Jews. Imagine, forgive those who murder me for they know not what they are doing. Why forgive a person for not knowing what they are doing? Wouldn't we say, Father, since they don't know what they're not guilty of, they don't need forgiving? Either you know what you're doing and you need forgiving, or you don't know what you're doing and you don't need forgiving. So why is Jesus drawing attention to their ignorance of what they're doing and asking God to forgive them? Because they're not guilty for not knowing. Forgiveness is for the guilty. So when Jesus says, Father, forgive them, he means they are guilty. And then when he says, for they don't know what they are doing, he must mean, well, they really should have known, right, what they're doing. And they are guilty for not knowing what they're doing. In other words, 
they have so much evidence of the truth that the only explanation for their ignorance is they don't want to see it. They are hard and resistant and have a guilty blindness. That is why they need to be forgiven. So here are Gentiles and Jews killing the Son of God, the Messiah, the most innocent, most loving man that ever existed. But they don't know whom they're killing. If we're honest with ourselves, we're very much like the Gentiles and the Jews at times. Ignoring the truth, giving in to our fleshly desires, continually choosing sin over Jesus. Sin put Jesus on the cross. It's the most painful thing Jesus ever said, but it's the sweetest thing he ever said as well. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they've done. For this ignorance They were guilty and in need of forgiveness. And amazingly, Jesus is praying for them that his father would open their eyes and help them to see their sin, repent, and be forgiven. That's the beautiful thing about this prayer of Jesus. It declares guilt, but at the same time, it offers forgiveness. Each and every one of us needs forgiveness. Romans 3.23 says, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. And out of Jesus' mouth, he says, forgive them. So today on Good Friday, this is my prayer for us. If you're rejecting Jesus as the Son of God and Lord and Savior of your life, he declares that we are guilty. And he offers himself as a sacrifice to pay for our sins and forgive all sin, past, present, and future. So I encourage you, accept the promise and be forgiven. Be forgiven for our ignorance of not knowing what we've done. When he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they've done. We are blessed. That's what's so good about Good Friday. You know, every Sunday at New Life, we participate in the Lord's Supper where we hold on to a cracker and a small cup of juice representing Jesus' broken body and shed blood. It's a time I love every week because we get to come back to the foot of the cross and we get to hear, Father, forgive them for they know not what they've done. We get to accept that grace and forgiveness that only comes through belief in Jesus. So the band's gonna play another song for us. I'm going to encourage you to take your cracker and juice, bread, whatever you've chosen, and let's all join together. Let's join together, lay down at the foot of the cross today our sin, our ignorance, for when we turn away from God. Let's leave that today and turn towards Jesus on Good Friday. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that you'd speak in our hearts, that you would help us remove any doubt and ignorance, God. That we would see Jesus for who he is, your son, that we'd make him Lord of our lives, God. Lord, my prayer is for those who have yet to do that, that you'd speak boldly to them today that they would surrender to you for the first time, God. They would take that leap of faith and surrender once and for all and accept that grace and forgiveness of all sin through your son, Jesus. And we ask all this in his name. Amen.
is calling Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar In the Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Welcome back, and as we close out our reflection time right now, I just want to encourage you to keep on processing, keep on thinking about 
What next steps you can take in your faith based on what Christ did for us so many years ago? Now, as you reflect and if you have questions about what it means to follow Jesus or just questions about following Jesus in general, I would love to talk to you a little bit more. All you have to do is just email me at tomp at newlife.church. Okay, and finally, as we wrap up, I do want to invite you to our Sunday Easter services. Whether you're going to attend in person or online, we have lots of great options for you. I would encourage you to go to newlife.church slash Easter. You can find out all the different locations in Linton Hall and Chantilly and the online location as well. All right, again, thank you so much for being with us today, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your Good Friday.